Can you tell I like this color a lot? I don't know how obvious it is, I just thought I'd let you know. Me and my walls, we are now one. <laughs> Literally just look like a floating head, okay. <laughs> everyone, welcome back. Today I really wanted to do another full face of new makeup, but this is more affordable. We've got some Revlon, e.l.f., Makeup Revolution, Makeup Obsession, and some of these are newer products that have just kind of hit the drugstore. The most recent ones that I've personally seen. With the way the world is at the moment, there hasn't been that many releases, which is actually kind of refreshing. <laughs> you know, it's nice that the world's kind of slowed down as well, because the amount of product that is coming out like all the time is a bit crazy, so it's nice to just chill for a little bit. But yeah, without further ado, let me stop yammering on and let's zoom you guys in and let's get started with this face. All right, so I've kind of failed already. Um, <laughs> I had these samples of the Magic Foundation by Charlotte Tilbury that I kind of wanted to try. I know it's not affordable, but I just thought I'd try it right here right now because I had them. But I thought on the front it had the number of the foundation. Turns out it doesn't. <laughs> and it's on the back and these are two different shades that I don't think are gonna work for me. But three Fair Pale and then four Fair Pale. I don't understand why they're both the same shade in different numbers. I'm gonna open number three and we'll see what shade we've got. All right, let's have a quick look. Oh gosh, I don't think that's gonna work for me. Let's, no, <laughs> look at that difference to my neck. Okay, never mind. I do, however, have a little sample of the Wonder Glow by Charlotte Tilbury, so I'll just try this as my primer for today, and then I'll get an affordable foundation that I know I love and put that over top. And then we shall see, oh gosh, how this works. It's actually quite dark. Mmm, that smells really good. Okay, it cheers out, that's great. I thought I was gonna look like a bronzed crazy person. I don't know. This feels really nice, really hydrating, really kind of slippy but not in a greasy way. It has given a subtle golden kind of glow to my skin, which is quite nice. For my affordable foundation, because I haven't actually used this that much and I really want to, I'm gonna use the Conceal and Hydrate by Makeup Revolution. Just slap this on. Can't quite remember what I think about this foundation, you know? It's been quite a while since I've used it. Oh, I think I've probably added way too much to my face. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. I wanted to look flawless today anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna use my sponge to take away some of this craziness. <laughs> okay, that looks so much better now that I've gone over with the sponge. I was looking a little crazy for a second there. <laughs> All right, next up is concealer. I've got the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. If you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know I love the original camo concealer that e.l.f. brought out, but now they've got a hydrating one. What? I'm really excited to try this out. I've got the shades Fair Warm and Light Sand. Although I was thinking about doing a separate video on these, comparing them to the matte ones. Do I do that video? You know what, I think I'll save this for another day because I do have another concealer to try. <laughs> I have this one by I Heart Revolution. It's the Heartbreakers Concealer with Coconut Extract and Vitamin C, E, A, B3 and B5. Mm. Great stuff. <laughs> this is in the shade Custard, which I believe is their paler shade. Oh, oh cute. It has a little heart doe foot. Oh, my camera battery is showing that it's about to die, which is great, but I live life on the wild side, so let's see how long this will last me. <laughs> okay, this doe foot does not pick up a lot of product and it's kind of scratchy. So although it's cute, it's not really doing its job. Hello. Ooh. Wow, you can really smell the coconut in that. It's quite strong. It's taken me forever to put any product <laughs> underneath my eyes. I quite like the undertone of this color. It's very neutral. It literally smells like my Bondi Sands fake tan. <laughs> it's very coconutty. It has a hint of alcohol. You know what this smells like? A pina colada, which you know, I've got nothing against pina coladas, but I don't necessarily want it on my face. <laughs> I hate, absolutely hate this applicator. <laughs> Like why? I think if they had made it more like poofy, it would have been okay. Let's blend this out a little. Where'd it go? <laughs> Hello? Okay, so this blends out insanely easily, which is good, I guess. But I also feel like the coverage disappears with it. Hmm. Like I have a slight highlight on my face there, which is good. Finish looks pretty. Creamy, kind of satiny finish. You can still see a lot of my blueness 
coming through. I would say this is pretty light coverage, not even really virgin on medium. It's just kind of evening out the tone. I'll possibly layer this with something a little bit more fuller coverage for the finish. I have a feeling if you like really natural looking makeup, you'd really like this concealer. And it was very, very affordable. I'm just going to leave it for a sec to settle down a little bit and see if it goes to the creases very quickly or anything like that. I'm going to switch out the battery in my camera. And I'll see you in a moment. <laughs> Alright, so it's been a minute or so since I've applied the concealer and it hasn't really creased any more than what was naturally there. And also the finish hasn't really changed either, which I quite like. I am going to have to set it because otherwise it'll move everything on my face. <laughs> but I actually really like the finish. I feel like it makes me look very fresh faced which I really, really like. Before I powder down anything, I've actually got a cream product to try. I feel like now more than ever, cream blushes are like really becoming a dominant thing in the makeup industry. I'm really intrigued, especially having like oilier skin. So I picked up this by Maybelline, which is the Cheek Heat Sheer Gel Cream Blush. And it's in the shade 15 Nude Burn. That doesn't sound very appealing. <laughs> I just looked at the colour and thought the colour was pretty. So I've like literally never used a cream blush in my life. So I'm not quite sure how to use it. I'm assuming you just use a little bit. Let me just show you the colour that we're going to be working with. So that is the colour. It does look like a very pretty colour. However, it does look very intense right now. <laughs> I'm just going to take whatever's on the back of my hand and just kind of pounce it on with my finger and hope for the best. <laughs> oh, actually on the skin it doesn't go on that intensely, which is great. That's quite pretty. It does feel like a kind of tacky product, however, which is a bit strange. I'm picking up a lot of my foundation on my finger. I may actually try using this with a sponge, see if that's easier to control. I won't take away any of my foundation. Okay, literally nothing's really coming off on the sponge. <laughs> Hello? Okay, no, I think the best way is your fingers. Kind of using like one finger to apply and then another blank finger to blend it. I actually really like that. I really like the color. It is such a natural looking flush to the skin. The consistency was a little bit strange, but I feel like using your fingers is the best bet with these kind of products. Blended into my foundation seamlessly. It did feel like it was kind of mixing in with my foundation almost, which I can't work out if I like or if I dislike. <laughs> It hasn't affected the coverage or anything like that though. I will have to play around with this a little bit more, but so far I really like the way it looks on my skin. It blended out really easily. It was a little bit intimidating, but really was not hard to work with at all. And the end result is really pretty. Okay, so now I've tried that, I can powder my face. I've tried this once before, but I really want to try it again. I can't remember how I felt about it at all. <laughs> and it's the e.l.f. under eye setting powder. You guys know I love my Laura Mercier secret brightening powder to set my under eyes. And I'm in search for a more affordable alternative to see if there is anything out there that's comparable just because it is like a 22 pound under eye setting powder and I understand that is kind of ridiculous <laughs> so I want to see if I'm gonna like this and see if it's gonna be comparable at all looking at this right now it actually looks a little pinky which I did not realize it feels so smooth though okay let's try this and set the under eye well this is so finely milled and going everywhere. <laughs> this will get rid of any creases, which by the way, there is really not that much crease in from this concealer. Let's just set under here. So one thing I love about the Laura Mercier one is it's so lightweight that I don't feel it on the under eye. This one, I can kind of feel like a little bit, a little bit of tightness under there, which I'm not that fond of. This kind of is doing that a little bit and it has kind of taken away a little bit of that luminosity, obviously, from the concealer that was reflecting the light. So now it does appear to have less coverage. So that's a bummer, <laughs> but it's not the worst my under eyes have looked. It does feel weird already having blush on. <laughs> I'd be interested to know actually if that blush works over powder. So my under eyes don't look that bad, but don't really look better. So it's not going to be replacing my Laura Mercier anytime soon, but maybe with higher coverage concealers, it may look better. I also have this by Make Revolution. It's the coconut scented baking powder. Oh, I did not realize it was actually scented like coconut. I've got a lot of things scented like coconut today. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, does kind of smell like coconut. I have tried this once before, but I can't quite remember how I felt about it. So I want to try it once again and see how it sets my face. Let's just set this. Whoa. Whew. I proper embedded this powder into this brush, so I did not expect that much kick up. But okay, it smells pretty much exactly like the concealer does, but with less alcohol. 
<laughs> Didn't use a lot of powder, but I feel like this is still keeping the luminosity. Just gonna pat on a little bit more. That's now fully mattified my forehead pretty much. Oof, it really does smell. Okay, so my face is looking a little bit more cakey, but it has fully set my foundation. It's still a little bit, little bit luminous. It has made me look flat. I still kind of smell it, which isn't my favorite, <laughs> but I'll get over it and hopefully it'll die out after a little bit. Okay, if anything's changed, I just, I just took a snack break, okay? Don't judge me, I'm in quarantine. <laughs> you know, I haven't been away that long and I've already got kind of like expression lines coming in with this foundation, which isn't my favorite thing. After this base has been sitting on my face for a little while, I don't like the powder. Um, I'm looking very just makeup-y, you know? And like it's sitting on top of the skin. So that isn't my favorite, but oh well. Next, we're gonna move on to two Revlon products, which I'm really excited to try. It's the Revlon Skin Lights Collection, and this is the Prismatic Bronzer, and then I've also got the Prismatic Highlighter. Look at this. I'm hoping it's gonna be pale enough for my skin, because in the actual pan, it does look like it may be a little bit dark. Fingers crossed, because it looks beautiful. <laughs> but first of all, let's try this bronzer. I really like the tone. It looks quite dark in the pan, but actually in real life it does look very golden and that's the kind of undertone that I usually prefer, like a yellow kind of neutral. I don't need red, okay? Unless I want to look like an oompa loompa, I don't need red in my life. I could just, you know, get it open. That'd be great. You little bitch. Finally, this is what it looks like. Ooh got a sheen to it. I really love the like embossing and design which is such you know a superficial thing. I really like the color. Let me just swatch it. It feels very very stiff in the pan. Yeah it is a kind of goldeny tone. I'm hoping this will go on very sheerly. I'm going to use a big fluffy brush. Doesn't look like there's anything coming up on the brush. <laughs> Hello. There's a slight tint on there now. Let's try this out on the skin. Mm. Okay, I can kind of see it on there. Can you guys see the difference between like a subtle bronzy glow? Obviously, I'm using a brush that's gonna diffuse the product, which is what I need. <laughs> but it looks really pretty. And the sheen does come across on the skin, but it's not like shimmery. It just looks very natural and very skin-like, which I appreciate. Also, it's like melting into my skin. Like, it's almost not traceable, if that makes any sense. It really seamlessly blends, like I can't see a start or finish to the product, which is what I like. I may go in with a slightly smaller brush. This is a dual fiber. Just see if I can make it a little bit more intense. I will say you do kind of have to put your brush in there quite a few times to pick up product, just because it is so hard pressed in the pan. But the actual product in itself is such a nice tone. Usually with affordable bronzers, they do go more on the warm side, but this is the kind of tone that I like. Like this reminds me, it's not exactly the same, but it reminds me of the Fenty bronzer in the sun. It is beautiful. I'm really happy with this if you couldn't tell already. <laughs> you guys are probably gonna think I'm crazy, but I'm just gonna use a little bit on my sponge to go down the side of my nose because my nose has been really finicky lately and it's not cooperating with brushes. So I'm just gonna see if I can apply some of the powder with my sponge. My brushes are just picking up the product that's on my nose and then I'm left with like patches of my foundation missing. So I'm trying to remedy that with using a sponge instead. And so far, it seems to be working. That seems to have worked pretty nicely. Billable, blendable, easy to use, really beginner friendly, really good undertone, skin like finish. I highly recommend. Let's move on to the highlighter. I'm just gonna swatch it. Ooh, ooh, wow, that looks so smooth. Oh my gosh. Hello, ooh, that looks so pretty. I'm first gonna go in with the same brush I used for my bronzer. I just wiped it off a little bit just to get like an overall kind of glow. Ooh. With a more kind of bigger brush, it's not that blinding or anything, but it is a pretty sheen. So I'm gonna go in with a little fluffy brush. Again, this seems very hard pressed in the pan, so I'm really like pushing my brush in to pick up the product. And let's see. Ooh, okay. If you want a blinded highlight, use a smaller brush. <laughs> I mean, obviously, but you know, especially with this. On the skin, it does look very, very, very smooth. It is picking up on my texture just a little bit, but it's not emphasizing it. It's probably gonna sound a little bit weird, but the product doesn't go very far. So you pick up quite a bit on your brush, but then it doesn't travel very far. Does that make sense? Like I've just put a lot on my brow bone and then I went to put it like on my forehead and it's not transferring over 
any product. I don't know how to explain it. There's just no residue. So like once you place down the product, it's placed down. But it is blending, so it's not like sticking. I don't quite know how to explain it. <laughs> but it is very, very pretty and it gives such a nice glow to the skin. I really love the tone of it. Very pretty. Really like it. Glad I picked it up. All right, now I'm gonna do my brows. I've got this by Makeup Obsession, which is the Brow Goals Angled Precision Tip Pencil. And this is in the shade Ash, Ash Brown? I don't know why I would have picked up Ash Brown, but okay. I think there was only like three shades in this pencil, which I don't know if it was just my store, but we need more than three shades, definitely. Wow, this, this feels, why does this feel so heavy? <laughs> this is so weird. It feels like a weighted pencil. It has a spoolie on one end and then, uh, I didn't know I ordered a white pencil. Um, <laughs> it's got like a white color to it. I don't know if that's, no, that's the actual color the pencil's coming up as. The shape is interesting. It's like a tiny little teardrop. That looks quite cute. But yeah, just a funky color. I don't know if it's like a film. I'll just try it on the back of my hand. So it is a brown color. This looks a little bit light, actually. Very, very hard to get the color out. But now you can kind of see the color coming through. Try it out anyway and see what happens. Okay, so it is depositing color, which is great. I think the slip of my foundation underneath is probably helping this a little bit. And I do like that it's very small. That's actually not half bad, you know. It's defined the brow quite nicely. It was nice and creamy. Spoolie on here is really nice as well. It really grabs. It's so weird that it's so weighted. It doesn't affect the actual brow application or anything, but it just feels weird. I'm gonna go ahead and do this brow off camera and then we'll be right back and we'll get into the eyes. Okay, so just finished up the other brow and I put a little bit of soap through just to set them. I think I'm having quite a good brow day. I'd say they look pretty good. Almost the same. Yeah, I really like this eyebrow pencil even though we had a little bit of a dubious start with the shade. <laughs> okay, well now let's zoom you guys on in and get to the eyes because I'm feeling naked right now. Okay, so I've seen nobody talking about these products and I'm really intrigued because I feel like they may just make eyeshadow really quick and easy. So these are by Revlon. I don't know if they're new, but I've never seen them before. And it's the Color Stay Stick. So I've got one in the velour finish and then one in the glaze finish. It works out kind of matte and like shimmer, metallic, you get, you get me? I. You probably got the gist of that anyway, but. <laughs> so in the velour finish, I've got the shade 878 Cashmere. And then for the glaze finish, I've got the shade 871 Luster. Before we do go any further though, just to make you aware, it wouldn't be a Kirial video if it didn't have some glitter. So we also have these e.l.f. glitter toppers to try, which I'm so excited for. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit of glamour, but let's get into these sticks first of all. The way these kind of work is it's like a Oh, that just full on came out like that. Okay, you just calm down, sir. Um, so it spins up like this, and then on the other side, we have this little smudger thing, uh, which feels very, very firm. I'll give it a go, but I have a brush on standby just in case, okay? This is kind of like a paler shade. They do have darker shades, but I thought I'd just start with this, you know, and see if I like it or not. I'm just gonna apply this like I would a normal kind of crease color. Let's give this a go. It's kind of like a taupey brown, which is actually very, very sheer. <laughs> Take this through the crease, you know. It's maybe mixing with my concealer that's on my lid maybe, but it's looking a little bit gray. It does feel very creamy though, which is nice. Okay, let's try buffing it out with this thing. No, no to this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna take a brush and just kind of blend it out a little. That works a lot better with a brush. This does kind of have like a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not completely flat matte. It does blend out on the edges really nicely. It's super soft. It's quite a cool tone. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more warm tone than what it is. And again, it's very, very sheer. I feel like this is gonna be so quick and easy for people though. Like look how quick this is blending out and it's very, seamless, very effortless. You don't need to think about it too much. For like an everyday kind of makeup, I think this would work quite nicely, you know? I'm just hoping it's not gonna like crease or anything because it is very creamy. I can kind of feel it on my eyelid, but I have just been going like back and forth on it. So I did put a lot of product down. Not too heavy on my eyelids, but I can definitely feel it on there. And I do feel like it's getting more matte as time goes on. Now I'm gonna try the glaze. I'm gonna just start in the middle of my eye and see what happens. 
hello is anything happening <laughs> when i swatch these in store they seem so pretty like if i swatch this on my hand it looks really pretty but on my eye there's there's not a lot happening i cannot see a glazed kind of moment um i was hoping this was gonna be pretty and metallic and a little bit more than what it's giving me it's giving me kind of like a wet eyelid kind of look <laughs> and i don't know if i'm fond of it <laughs> i mean it is a very soft everyday look I guess but I was just hoping for like a little bit more from that glaze color. I'm gonna take a little bit of this velour color underneath my eyes. It is so easy to blend. It's such a convenient product you know. I think I would pick up more of the velour finish like it's such a pretty easy product to use with more deeper colors and you'd be able to maybe manipulate it a little bit more like use it for like liner and add a little bit of depth to the outer corner more because obviously I'm quite pale and this is only just showing up on me so it's not going to be very diverse color wise with this light shade but maybe with a darker shade it would be better i will never use the little sponge thing that's on the end there ever again because that is awful glazed i just don't it looks better on my hand than what it does my eyelid but you know what that's okay because we have glitter to save the day <laughs> so i picked up three shades i've got disco queen flirty birdie and 24 karat gold i kind of want to leave the gold for like a less soft kind of day but i'm kind of feeling these i think see this rosy tone is gonna go better with the eye look but i kind of want to try this one just because i think it looks really pretty and let's see if these are any good oh my gosh <laughs> it is so tiny so cute but i thought it was gonna be a lot bigger like it's literally just this bit here but okay let's see if they're comparable at all to my beloved stila magnificent metals it has a tiny little doe foot applicator like look how small that is it is so freaking cute. It doesn't pick up that much product on the doe foot. Do a little bit of a spot my eye, even though I've just done the glaze there, but it's fine. I'm just gonna pop this ooh, in the center here. Wow, that is so pretty. I'm just gonna do a halo that goes almost right the way to the brow. <laughs> so these are definitely more of a glittery top coat rather than a like shadow that you can kind of cut the crease with. Or anything like that because I mean this one in particular doesn't have like a base color really and it's just very sparkly glitteriness which you know I can appreciate <laughs> wow I love that it's still drying down for a second but that is beautiful oh my gosh okay that was the shade disco queen I'm really excited to use the other colors now I am thinking about wearing lashes so I kind of want to line my eyes before I go to mascara I got this masterpiece eye precision liquid liner by max factor I don't know if I'm gonna like this it's one of those felt to end ones I don't know hmm. seems pretty black seems kind of malleable the end as well let's just hope and pray Okay, let's, let's just hope and pray. <laughs> I don't really want to do a wing. Oh, why is my eye tingling? <laughs> I just applied like a little bit of a line and my eye is feeling a little weird. I just kind of want to outline the eye for when I put lashes on. Hmm. I did that thing where one side is way thicker than the other. <laughs> and now I've got to try and even them out. Please pray for me because I don't think it's going to go that well. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to stop. <laughs> The actual eyeliner is pretty black and the actual felt tip, it was quite movable and the tip is very fine on the end so it wasn't too hard to use. I just don't use liner that often if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> but the actual result is pretty good and it didn't take me too long to do it. There's no bleeding, no smudging, nothing so far. So that's great. Now let's move on to mascara. All right, so Makeup Revolution released like I don't know, it was like eight different mascaras at one time the other day. And I know one of you guys actually asked me to review this, I'm pretty sure. I mean, actually it was quite a while ago, so I don't know if any of you remember. <laughs> but I'm here now reviewing it for you, so I hope you enjoy. <laughs> this one's like double sealed, but why? So much wasted plastic, like oh my gosh. This is the Big Lash Extra Large Volume Mascara, the wand 
boil. <laughs> Looks like this. Very, very big. <laughs> the plastic bristles this is obviously the before as you can see my lashes are like literally non-existent until I put mascara on because I have blonde eyelashes you guys know I love the makeup revolution the mascara that's like literally one of my all-time favorite mascaras so let's see if they've got another hit on their hands shall we feels very soft even though it is plastic bristles I can really push into the lash line and it's not hurting or anything sometimes I find with the plastic ones they're very spiky my eyelashes however are very wispy looking and you guys know I love volume this isn't really giving me that volume but it is gripping onto the lashes really well maybe it's a builder we shall see it does seem like a very thick formula in the tube a lot is coming out on the wand so here's a before and after now I don't mind the way it's made my lashes look but it's not impressed me that much they are quite black and very wispy and there is like a decent amount of thickness but it hasn't lengthened the lashes that much but this is supposed to be a thickening mascara so you know I guess it did what it said <laughs> I personally would still buy the original this is the original one this is so battered and loved <laughs> okay so the lashes are by a brand that I've never tried before and it's Prima lashes I did like a little haul when they were having a sale they had like a 60 5% off sale or something. Um, so I bought a few different pairs in bundles just because they were like three pound something for five pairs of lashes. So I thought, why not? <laughs> they do sell mink lashes, which I'm not down for, but I did pick up the faux mink. So I picked up the styles of Jessica, Lily, Holly, Alaya, Alaya, don't know how to say it. And then Imogen. Let's open these up and see what they look like. Very long, so I'm probably gonna have to cut quite a lot of these. <laughs> this is the Imogen pair, which I think could look kind of nice and wispy. Again, it looks really long, I will have to trim them. Um, because literally, I look like I've got a bird on my eye right now. But they could be nice and soft and fluttery once they're actually laid down, you know? Okay, I'm gonna go cut them, apply them, and then I'll be right back and see how they look. All right, so the lashes are on. Um, these are so pretty. They're so fluttery and they give like a lot of drama but not too much. They're just so like effortless. I really like this style. Okay, a little bit of soft glam. We like her. Okay. These are in the style Imogen. Just gonna add a touch of inner corner highlight. So just the face highlight that we tried today. Gonna add a little bit of a nude pencil to my waterline. This is the Revolution Pro Supreme Mint Gel Eyeliner in Nude. And, and now it's time for lips. I've never tried one of these it's by L'Oreal it's their like matte liquid lipsticks and this is in the shade I empower oh wow this is what the applicator looks like it's very pointed and very angled <laughs> we'll just try her and see what she looks like Ooh, smells really nice <laughs> very very watery I don't know if I like this applicator it doesn't seem to pick up a lot of product and like it's just awkward <laughs> but it is very precise because of the tip this is my second dip in oh you can get some real precision on the cupid's bow with this don't think i like it though like this thing is weird because it is so watery i'm getting like a little bit of patchiness i'm a little bit disappointed because i heard so many good things about these i do think it's a nice shade but it's just i don't know i think the thing that i don't like about it the most is the applicator and the fact that it's very wishy-washy formula it feels very thin and it looks nice on the lips but again it was just a bit patchy and the applicator was a no from me. I feel like I'm starting to look a wee bit shiny. Although I have been filming for like three hours, so you know that would explain why. Okay, well that is it for the products. Let's zoom out and see the finished full look all together with you know the rest of my being. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, you guys. So here is the finished look with all the products on my face. It's been a little while. I mean, I took my time filming this video. Okay. <laughs> But also, I just took a little bit of time to let this makeup kind of sit, see how it lasts for a little bit of time, especially with the eyeshadow because it was like a cream. I wanted to see if it would crease, so I'd done a little bit of a wear test just to see how the makeup settles. I am happy to report that it hasn't creased in my eyes or anything like that, and also the e.l.f. glitter hasn't creased or anything like that. Stay in there, it's still beautiful. I do feel like the highlight and also the blush 
has kind of disappeared a little bit. The bronzer is more prominent. Maybe a set and spray would help that out a little bit, keep it on a little bit longer. However, I do really like the products in themselves, the way they went onto the skin. However, obviously the stay in power just isn't the best. I did have some food and the lip completely came off, so it's not very long wearing, just an FYI. <laughs> and also it still kind of looks sheer to me. Like I can still see the kind of pigment of my lip coming through where I've kind of like overlined my lip which I like to do with matte lipsticks it's a very prominent different color maybe it would help if you put like a concealer or something over top of your lips and neutralize them a little bit but you shouldn't have to do that you know I do quite like the finish of it though I have like a subtle sheen to the lips like it makes them look very natural it's not going into fine lines at all so yeah I like the actual product but the pigment just isn't enough for me personally. The powder has kind of like melted on my skin. It hasn't really stayed around for long. As you can see my skin's kind of getting like shiny as it does. <laughs> a powder that kind of made my face look a little bit cakey and now it's disappeared. It's not worth it for me in my opinion. Maybe I'll try setting my under eye and see if it works better in that area. The under eye setting powder, um, again it's a kind of meh product. I prefer my Laura Mercier. I don't know if I'm ever gonna find something to replace that one. <laughs> Actually, if you know of any really good and dry setting powders, please let me know. Pressed or loose, let me know in the comments down below. I really love the way my brows look. That brow pencil is really good. It's staying on. The color's really nice. It doesn't look, you know, too crazy, like ashy or anything. The actual product and the pencil and everything like that in itself was really good. Products that I wouldn't bother with again would be the Colorstay Glaze Stick by Revlon. It just didn't add enough for me for it to be something that I would use as an alternative to a shadow. Wasn't first on the mascara either, just didn't do enough for me. I'm really picky and when I love a mascara I've got to love a mascara. And then something that I can't make my mind up about is the concealer. I think I like it for more natural days but it just doesn't have the amount of coverage that I want so maybe mixed in with other concealers because the finish of this is beautiful. These so gorgeous all around good products and I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm gonna have to try more Revlon stuff now. <laughs> this brow pencil as I said seriously surprised me. I didn't think it was gonna like it that much but I really love the way my brows look today so definitely gonna keep on using this. Although I didn't like the glaze one I quite like the Colorstay Velour color stick. I need to get a darker shade but I actually do like the eye look today. So soft and it was so effortless and it was literally just one colour pretty much. Don't use this stubby piece of crap on the end. It just picks up product and doesn't blend it. Like I barely used it and it picked up so much product on the end there so don't bother using that. Use a brush or even your fingers and it'll just be better for you. The blush I was pleasantly surprised with actually and I think I'm gonna have to dive more into more cream blushes because I really like the formula of this one and the payoff and the finish. This eyeliner actually impressed me as well, quite easy to use and it's very black. I usually use a brush tip applicator, like I really love the Fenty Beauty Fly Liner and then also the NYX uh, Epic Ink Liner, but I'd say this is actually a really easy liner to use, even though it's not my typical eyeliner kind of brush applicator thing. <laughs> I quite like it. And then finally, this baby by e.l.f. I mean, you guys know, I don't have to keep saying it, but I love liquid glitter eyeshadows. The Stila ones are my favorite. This isn't so much similar. It is a beautiful, glittery, shimmery topper. So it's something you're gonna wanna add on top of eyeshadow, and if you've already got a cut crease, then you can kinda add this on. I don't know if it's gonna differ in formula throughout the other shades. You know what, actually, I'm gonna swatch them for you, because I'm dedicated, okay? <laughs> oh. Mmm, oh my gosh, these ones have a base. <laughs> this one looks so good. Okay, these come out as a thicker formula than that original one I used. Oh my gosh, do we have a dupe on our hands? Because if we do, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> I cannot believe how sparkly they are. Those are five pounds, five pounds. Look at it, look at it. I'm gonna have to do a look with these. Like that flirty birdie color. Kitten Karma's calling. She wants her colour back, okay. So this one is more of a topper. These ones appear to be that more kind of opaque base product that would be able to do a cut crease. Obviously I can't test that. I'm gonna have to try them myself. But super interested and I liked the kind of purpley one anyway. It's very pretty. Didn't crease, 
laid down on the lid, it doesn't feel heavy, doesn't feel itchy or glittery or anything, haven't had any fallout, overall great products. Okay, and we are done. I have a feeling this is going to be a very long video because I've been filming it for like five hours now. Um, <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed getting excited over some makeup with me. Overall, I love the way the look came out. Oh, I forgot about the lashes as well. They went on like a dream and they're so fluttery and I can't even feel them on my lids. Really good lashes. I really like these. Yeah, okay, now I'm done. <laughs> I hope you guys are staying safe and sane in this time and I hope this video brought you some relaxing time where we could just chill and just play around. I hope you guys are okay. Let me know if there are any particular videos that you would like me to film. I may start utilizing the community tab a little bit more because I'm so excited we can finally use that. I might ask for like video suggestions, products you want me to try, that kind of thing. I'm excited to talk to you in that section as well. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe. We're all in the house doing nothing, so why not? If you need somebody to watch or put in the background, feel free. <laughs> if you did want to subscribe, all you need to do is hit the red button down below and the bell button and that'll just notify you when I upload. I'm gonna try and do like maybe three times a week because I have nothing else to do right now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna love you and leave you. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I hope to see you on the next video. Till then, bye guys. Why does this chair make so much noise? Okay, what is, what is going on over here? So true. Get in line. Get in line. Somebody come get her, she ain't in that constraint. Oh, I try and put some effort in and this is what happens. Like, what is going on right now? Why is my hair a mess even though I've curled it? You know, it's nice to, you know, it's nice to, you know, it's nice, you know, it's nice to, you know, it's nice to, you know, it's nice to, you know, it's nice, my eye is twitching. Can you guys see that? This eye is twitching. It's been twitching for like the past two days. Can you please stop? I hate this packaging. Oh, somebody come get her. She's a healing. Somebody save me from all the TikTok songs because I cannot get them out of my head. Why do I have to fight my makeup products to get into them? All right, the fight was won. Okay, we have victory. Ooh. Imagine a world like this. Somebody come get her. She <laughs> help me. Well, come on, Andy. Wherever you are, I believe that the heart does go on. Ew, I look so ugly with my hair like this. Stop.